levels of organization in the ecosystem. So first, what is the definition of ecology? So ecology is the relationship between living things and their environment. So here I have a picture of a frog, snow owl, um, snail, turtle, snow monkey. All these organisms, including the shark, live on Earth. Okay, each one has a different environment in which they live in and they interact with it in different ways. But altogether, those live on planet Earth. So ecology is the study of relationships between living things and their environment. So what is the relationship between these two different groups? We have living things, plants, protists, animals, bacteria, fungus. They all kind of relate to each other. So the protists live in the soil. The plants grow there they transform the sun sun's energy into um, a usable form known as glucose animals come along and consume that other animals will come and eat those other animals those animals die bacteria and fungus break those animals down and the process starts all over but now we have water soil light minerals air all these things are non-living but together they interact together they need each other Living things, not so much, but the live or non-living things don't really need any of those. But the living things need all these. So now we're going to be talking about how do we organize these things in the environment. So in biology, living and non-living things are organized smallest to largest. The smallest is a species. So here I have um, one beaver. And the largest would be the biome. Species are the group of living things that can mate with one another. Okay, so if a beaver mates with another beaver, they can get another beaver. Uh, if a beaver mates, tries to mate with a groundhog, nothing's going to happen. Population is a group of living things that belong to the same species. So basically, two or more beavers would be an example of a population. Furthermore, communities are different populations that live together in a combined area. So you can think of a group of beavers and other animals that are living in an area. Or if you want to think more locally, you want to think of Aurora, Oswego, Montgomery. Those are different populations from different towns, but together they form a larger community. Next up is the ecosystem. That is a collection of all the organisms that live in a particular place. So this is the non-living and living parts of an environment. Next up is a biome. A biome is a group of ecosystems that have the same climate and similar dominant communities. So like we have the temperate forest biome. That is what we belong to here in Chicago. So we would have trees that have four seasons. So they lose their leaves in or they leaves change color in the fall, they lose them in the winter, they come back in the summer, they grow during the summer or spring, they grow during the summer, and then the process starts all over again. But a rainforest, desert biome, Great Plains, tundra, those places you will all know are different from your research we've been doing this week. So now on your notes, I want you to describe your local biome. So what shapes an ecosystem? There's two different things, abiotic factors and biotic factors. So whenever I put A in front of a word, it means like the opposite. So biotic, as we learned earlier, means living. So example of biotic factors would be animals, plants, bacteria, fungus, protists. Abiotic, so what is the opposite of living, would be non-living. So some really easy ones would be like rocks, temperature, wind, soil, sun. Together, abiotic and biotic factors determine the survival and efficiency of an ecosystem or habitat in which an organism lives. So if there's things that let the organism um, grow and thrive, then those are good factors. But if I had something like an abiotic factor, like a hurricane that came through, that could decimate the plant life and make it so this mountain goat or other animals um, would have trouble living. So it's a give and take with that.